Hey everyone, Leo with Dreaming Tree and welcome to the assembly video for our floral tissue box. Many of you have requested the rectangular shaped uh, tissue box. We have a square one or the, the more compact one from a, a previous uh, winter bundle, uh, but this one's great for the longer ones, okay? So let's jump right into it here. There are some floral elements, but they are very simple and we can put those together. I'm gonna grab a couple dowels of various sizes and let's just go over and discuss uh, the actual flowers. So what I did here was I grouped them together by size. There's two that are um, large, they're the largest ones. There's four that are slightly smaller, four more that are slightly smaller than the previous ones. And then there are four small ones. Okay, there's a total of four flowers and two of them are large and two of them are small. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these two large ones, divide them in half. This one flower, that's another one. And each of these large ones is going to receive one of these. Okay. So we'll do the same thing with this one. Just take the next size down, pop it on top there. Okay, so we've got the two large ones and now we'll have two small ones. So these are going to go together and these are going to go together just like that. So just keep those in groups and I'll show you how to put these together. We're going to take these and again, I would create a um, sort of like an assembly line and just get all these flowers done. We'll start with the training. Okay, so take and place each of the petals between your finger and the dowel. I'm going to bring this uh, up about 90 degrees and run it through so that we kind of curl it. You know what? Let me grab one that I didn't already start on so we can start with something flat. Okay. Again, place the dowel or the pedal between your finger and the dowel, bring it up about 90 degrees and run it through to give it a little bit of a curl. We're then going to take and fold it up like that. Okay. We're going to do one more thing to these in just a moment, but first I'm going to just curl these like this. Okay, just like that. And then don't forget to bring these up like so. And then finally, I'm gonna grab a little bit of a thinner dowel and we're gonna take and just pinch the tip and curl it up against the dowel to bring it down more, just the very tip of that down. Okay, and I can actually probably grab an even thinner dowel to make that more pronounced like that. Okay, so we want those, the tips of these to really angle down and in a little bit. And that's the look we're going for. You don't have to do it this way, but this is how it was intended to be shaped. Okay, just like that. There we go. Okay, so there's one of your flowers. And let's do that a couple more times. So again, this one I already partially started. I'm gonna take and bring it up 90 degrees and run the dowel through. Very quick, very easy. Okay, and don't forget to bring them up. They're gonna eventually kind of fall down a little bit as we start to layer these flowers, but we do wanna Bring them up initially, and then again with the thin dowel, just take and curl the very tip, like so. I think either way will work. You could probably skip this step and it'll still look great, but this was the intention with this flower, okay? All right, so the two large ones are done. We're gonna repeat that same process for all of the layers for each of the flowers. Okay, so again, bring it up, I'm doing it from the underside. Give it a little bit of a curl, lift it up. And then as the petals get smaller, um, by the time we get to the smallest one, you may want to even grab a thinner dowel. Okay, you can do it from this angle or this angle, it doesn't really matter. Whatever feels more comfortable, so as long as you're curling it down. 
Oops. There we go. And so this will take a little bit of time, but it's fun. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do one large flower with you and one small flower. So we'll do this one next. Go ahead and just start curling. And you can do all of the curling that I'm doing like this with the training on all the flowers in an assembly line sort of fashion if you want. And then you can bring them all up like this in an assembly fashion if you want. And then you can do this part all at the same time. I feel like it's almost good to break this up um, so that you have different motions with your hand so that you don't end up getting like a cramp doing the same thing a hundred times. Okay, we'll grab this one here. Now, since this one's small, I'm actually gonna curl it with a, a thinner dowel. Okay, just like that. The thinner the diameter of a dowel, the more pronounced the curl will be. And then you can actually just kind of take and just fluff it up like that. And for this, you may want to go as far as using uh, like a hibachi skewer or like a little skewer to do the tips since the diameter is a lot less. And we do want that to be a little more pronounced because of the size of the petal. Okay, so you can experiment with various sizes of dowels to see what kind of results you get. Okay, so there's all four for the large one. And you're gonna do the same thing on that one. And then the small ones are the same thing, except we're just missing that large, that largest piece. It doesn't have this big piece. But the process is exactly the same. And I'll, I'll walk you through it here. Okay, so again, bring it up about 90 degrees, run it through. And don't tug on it too hard. I've done this before where I've actually ripped the petals off on accident because I was tugging at it a little too hard. I just bring them up, grab a nice thin dowel, and curl the tips down. Now you can see that on this pattern paper, I did hit this with a little bit of ink, which you're welcome to do. It will definitely make it look uh, a lot better, I think. I love seeing your projects in the group when you took the time to ink. Everything looks so much better so much more interesting, a lot more depth and dimension to everything. Okay, I'm gonna bring them up and in a little bit. I'm just basically creasing it right where the base of the petal meets that little center part. Just bending it. Okay, there we go. And let's get the tip. Okay. Now, we don't really have any centers for these because we figured, well, you can grab, uh, in our case, I think we're going to use some gold pearls for the centers of the flowers. Chances are you have some bling sitting around, whether it be a pearl or maybe you have some really fancy uh, bling that you can put in there in the centers. Okay, and uh, again, I'm using the smallest dowel I have now for this smallest set of petals. I'll bring those up a little bit. And then I'm going to use my hibachi skewer to train the tips. Okay. There we go. So a lot of a lot of flower stuff going on in this new bundle, which is great because we haven't done flowers in a while. We've been doing a lot of cards lately. And I know you guys like variety. Who doesn't? All right. Okay, so we got the three layers for the small flower, and you're gonna repeat that process for the other small flower. Okay, so we'll have two large, two small, and the assembly of these couldn't be easier. We're gonna start with the largest piece and just throw a little dot of glue in the center, grab the next largest piece, and we're gonna pop that in the center, but we're gonna offset it. And by offset, you can see how I have two petals right on top of each other, this one here and this one here. You don't want that, you wanna rotate it so that they're offset. So each petal gets a little more limelight. Okay, there we go. Get that nice and centered. Take a look at it from all directions. Make sure you have it centered. And the next little dot of glue in the center, take this one again, offset it, press it into place. 
Make sure it's centered. That looks great. And then finally, one more dot of glue, grab the smallest one, offset, I'm gonna press that into place. If you want, with this small one here, I'm gonna throw a little extra glue in there because there's a lot of resistance because of all of these petals. And what we wanna do is get it centered, and I'll just use a dowel to press that into place. There we go. Okay. So there is one of the large flowers and you can kind of separate these a little bit, bring these, these middle ones up a tiny bit. But there's a large one. I'm going to repeat the same process with this one here. And the small one is no different. Same process applies. I'm just going to glue from largest to smallest by applying a little bit of glue to the center, grabbing the next one down offsetting and pressing into place, making sure it's centered. There we go, just like that real quick, nothing to it. Another little dot of glue for the small guy. Offset and centered, press that into place. Again, you can grab your dowel to really push down in the center there. There we go. Okay, and there's your small flower. And you're gonna repeat the same thing with the small one until we have two large and two small. Very simple. So you can go ahead and pause me at this point if you want and do things at your own pace or you can hang out for story time while I finish these up. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is put together probably the base of the tissue box. Okay, so I'm just going through and doing this in a assembly line sort of manner, as I mentioned. But anyway, um, so I haven't really talked much about Mr. Peyton, our new baby boy. He just turned one month, um, and I'm starting to understand what everyone means by it goes by really fast because the, the boy is now almost 11 pounds. He was born seven pounds, 12 ounces. He's a little monster, a milk monster. Um, and yeah, he is, uh, he's very chill though, as I've mentioned to many people uh, through email and through, uh, and even on Facebook. So we were lucky, um, you know, he's being breastfed. So I'm sure that helps with not having stomach problems from, so I looked at some of the formula and I, I know that, you know, there's some people that just can't nurse and I get it. Uh, but I, I, I read, I read the ingredients on pretty much everything that I consume, uh, as well as our little guy. And there's just some stuff in there that I just don't understand how, uh, you know, how any human would, or any baby for that matter, would get that naturally. Uh, in, you know, in the environment. So anyway, I'm glad that we have the ability to nurse and he's growing very well, very healthy. So doing well. Just kind of keeping track of little milestones. His, uh, his neck is getting very strong. Oh, you know, I forgot to do, I forgot to train these. I forgot to curl them. You can see the difference here if you don't do that. So don't forget to do it. It's not too late to do it if you forget to do it initially. You can always do it once everything's together. But yeah, so things are going well. I know everyone kept warning me, you know, get your sleep now while you can. But uh, honestly, I have two cats and I know I have a robo feeder and I turn it on for like 5 a.m. But lately, I don't know, been trying to not feed them as much because it's winter. Uh, pumpkin doesn't get to go outside as much. And uh, trying to keep the weight off of them to keep them healthy. I want them all around for a long, long time. And so anyway, my point is, is that I'm used to being woken up multiple times in the middle of the night. You know, for those of you that have cats, you know, the old cat sitting on your chest, pawing at your face for whatever reason. Uh, 
and then the 2 a.m. running from one room to another room, super, super fast for absolutely no reason, that sort of thing. Um, so having a baby isn't really all that different. I mean, it's way different in some ways, but as far as my sleep goes, I'm not really seeing a difference, to be honest. And the cool thing about working from home is that, you know, if you... If I need to take a, a little power nap here or there, I, I can do that. Um, so yeah, things are good. Um, so yeah, I'm just wrapping this up here. I'm gonna finish off these flowers. This is probably uh, the most time consuming thing on this project, but of course, what would this be without some floral elements? So definitely take your time, enjoy the process, uh, especially with the inking, just really this is what really makes these projects stand out, is the, the little bits of detail that you add to them. Uh, I see a lot of three or paper projects out there, 3D paper projects that just look so bland. I'm not talking about the stuff that you post, I'm talking about um, stuff from our so-called competitors. Um, you know, to each his own. We love color, we love details, shadows and highlights. Uh, it's all there at your disposal. Why not use it? I'm sure that as you work with our projects over time, the feedback that you get from your recipients, I'm sure, is becoming uh, well, more and more positive and reaffirming that all the effort that you're putting into this is really paying off. You can notice the, all the little detail in the work that you put into it. Okay, so I've got one more little petal here to go. One more set of petals, I should say. And our flowers will be done. And again, the rest of this will go together pretty quick. Very simple little shapes that we're working with here. Okay, this is my final little curl. So yeah, again, thank you for uh, all the love and gifts that everyone sent for our little boy, Peyton. Uh, I'm still working on sending out letters of thank you for those of you that, that donated to our virtual baby shower. So if you haven't gotten yours yet, um, just be patient, it will come. Okay, so here we go, putting together the last little flower here. And we'll be on our way to assembling the actual box. Now, of course, you can always use this as a template and customize it however you want. If you, uh, if you don't want to put flowers on it and you don't want the elements on there, uh, like with a Cricut, you can contour everything out and just not cut out the flowers, put your own design on it. Uh, if you have you know, some um, special specialty card stock, uh, like say some Disney stuff or whatever it may be, you can use that and that'd be perfect for a child's room. Okay, there we go, that last one there, I'm gonna use a dowel for, just cause it's a lot easier. There we go. All right, so I've got my flowers done. As you can see here, those are ready to go. And next we're gonna take some time to put some of the elements uh, on these panels that are gonna go around the tissue box. Uh, these little leaves here that look like this are gonna go right here and you have to be somewhat careful in the placement just to make sure that we get everything aligned correctly with these little veins that are cut out. Okay, so I would go, go pretty easy with the glue here. You don't wanna cake this thing with too much glue because it may spill out and blemish the rest of your project, so be careful. But nice and easy, and I think I'm gonna, when I lay this down, just kinda do it in segments. So I'll do one half of it first, lining up the little veins here on the left side, and then should just kind of naturally fall into place on the other half. That's pretty good. That looks nice. Okay, so this is a, uh, it's a green pattern, and I did ink that with a little bit of an olive green. Obviously, I don't specify 
ink colors because the chances of you using the same exact patterns uh, or even just cardstock for that matter are very slim. Uh, but as a general rule of thumb, inking, when I ink things, I typically will use a color that's a shade or two darker than the color that I'm inking. And that typically works out perfect. Okay, so just line that up as accurately as you can. Like so, beautiful. Okay, so that's that for this top part. Okay, and we have the side panels here. So I'm just kind of going to go down the row here. Um, this is one of the side panels for the actual box. Now you'll notice on this panel there's a letter T that's um, this is score marked into it, like etched into it. And there's also a T on this. So you want to keep the T right side up. And just to the left and right of the T, you'll see two little marks. And those marks go right into this little area here where the, uh, the leaves join the center. Okay, so that's going to help you with the positioning of it. They should fit in there just like a little puzzle. Okay, and this is going on flat. We're not going to be doing any shaping with this whatsoever. And just try to get a little bit of glue out to the very tips of these leaves as well. So they don't accidentally get snagged and rip off. Okay, keep that T right side up. Use your little guides for placement. And just pop that right into place, just like that. I also ink this with a little bit of green as well, like a medium green. Okay, we put that off to the side. We're going to repeat the same process here on this one. I got the T right side up. Okay. And there we go. Rocking and rolling. Again, use your little guides. There's also a guide just above the T that goes into this little valley right here. So that's also a great place to kind of start and pop that into place. There we go. Okay, let's put that off to the side for now. And for these two large pieces, these large sections, they're going to be made up of three layers. Um, these two layers, we're actually going to, uh, we're going to do some training on those, but this layer here, this goes on flat. And again, there's the letter T here. T, make sure that it's right side up. There's also a T here. Okay, and we're going to use the little guides there to help us with the placement. And this is also going down flat. The other sections of leaves are going to be dimensional, and we will be training those here in just a little bit. We're actually going to do that after we assemble the box because we don't want to put those on just yet. Okay. So again, use those little guides, get that right in place, press that down, and there we go. Beautiful. Put that off to the side, repeat the same thing with this one, and then we're going to start applying these panels to the actual structure. We'll put the structure together, and we'll finish it off with the leaves and the flowers. So, pretty simple project. No rocket science here. Okay, and again, use those little guides. They're like two little U shapes right here, right there where my fingers are pointing. There we go. Okay, beautiful. Let's grab these brown elements that make up the actual box. So, there's the base of the box. Okay, so this piece here. You can see the thickness of this. It's about about an inch and three quarters. This piece is going to go with the with this. Okay, we're going to put this off to the side. This is just what the lid slides on top of. But these pieces are what make up the actual structure. Okay, and what we want to do. This is the top. The top is where the tabs are because we need to put the lid on the top, okay? It needs to be open from the bottom. So the bottom does not have a tab, the top does have a tab. And you'll also notice that these are numbered, okay? So for example, we have a Roman numeral one here. Let me flatten that out. There's a Roman numeral two. 
So that's going to go like that. We have a Roman numeral three that's going next. And four is four little dashes in the shape of a square or a circle, whatever you want to call it. Okay. And what we're going to do, as you can see here, these two pieces are identical. There's absolutely no difference. One's going to go here and one's going to go here. And then for this, this is also identical. Make sure your T is right side up. It's going to go here. And then this is going to go on piece number four. Okay. So these are all going to get glued down flat we can do that now. It's going to be a lot easier to do it now than it is later. And again, make sure that your tab is on top. Okay. So let's flip this over and begin applying our glue to this entire panel. Go nice and easy. You don't need big blotches of glue because there are some cutouts in the center. And if you get too much on there and it happens to squirt out, it will blemish the main structure. Now there's a lot of little details here and I wouldn't be overly concerned with trying to get glue on every single little inch of this. We can always go in and kind of clean that up. If we notice that there are any little sections kind of dangling, um, do your best and get this nice and centered, nice, even border all the way around. Just like that and press that down. And as I mentioned with these little details here, if you notice that there are any that are kind of dangling, and not making good contact with the actual structure, you can take a scrap piece of paper, throw a little bit of glue right on the very corner of it. Obviously there's no glue on the bottom of this. So you could rub this on this all day long and you don't have to worry about it blemishing anything and just see if you have any of these little areas peeling up. Uh, mine's actually staying in place very well because I got the, got the large parts, this one right here. You can see here if I grab, can see that one sticking up. Just pop a little bit of glue right underneath that and press it down. Simple as that. Okay. All right. So that one is in place, ready to go. Can put that off to the side for just a moment and moving on to the next section here, which is section two. And let's get our glue on that. Okay, nice and easy, nice and thin with the glue. Try to get it out to the edge. Keep that T right side up. This is your top where the tab is. Get that centered. Oops, that was not centered. Much better, there we go. Okay, section two, ready to go. Put that off to the side, grab the next section. Remember to keep the tab on top and the T right side up. We'll flip it over and the same thing. So work in the perimeter with a little bit, a little bit extra glue there on the perimeter, not much. And then just work the inside details here. Don't go crazy. Just a few dots here and there. One little dot of glue will work wonders. You'd be surprised at how effective it can be. Okay. And again, try to get that nice and centered, nice, even border all the way around. There we go. And pop that into place. Perfect. Okay. And I'm just pressing down on these little detailed areas in case I did get a little glue that shot out, just lift that right up with your finger. And there we go. Okay. There's another panel ready to go. And the last one, keep the tab on top T right side up and get that glued down. And this is going to go pretty quick from here on out. Okay. There we go. Beautiful.
Okay. All right, so all four tabs are now together. So, I'm sorry, all four layer or panels are. Let's do one more thing here. This piece is for the top where the actual uh, tissues are gonna come out. And you notice that there's a border inside as well. So we've got a border around the outside as well as on the inside. And let's just get that into place right now while everything is nice and flat. And we have a lot of little details here and this thing's a little flimsy. So just do your best, but again, don't lose your mind trying to get glue on every single inch of everything because we can always go back in and touch it up with our little painting method in case we have some little areas that are not sticking. Because you, your time is very limited before this glue starts to set anyway. So you could try to get glue on every single inch of this. By the time you do, half your glue is gonna be dried and it's completely a waste of time. Okay, so I'm, I'm staring at the center here, using the center as a guide and now looking at around the perimeter as well. Trying to make sure I'm maintaining a nice even border and then just drop that right into place. Perfect. I think that's pretty spot on. It's gonna, if it's off a tiny bit, no one's gonna really notice anyway. Okay, that looks great. And that turned out wonderful. Okay, pretty good, Leo. Good job. Okay, so now let's go ahead and construct the actual lid. So again, we're gonna do this in order, Roman numeral one. It's gonna to connect to two. Two is gonna to connect to three. And three is gonna to connect to four and then we're gonna tie it all together. So go ahead and start applying your glue to tab number one. We go a little heavier. Take that glue, spread it out to the very edge of the tab. You can put that down flat on your surface. Grab piece number two, line that up. Make sure it's flush at the bottom. And then also these horizontal score lines should also match up. Press that down into place. Then you can actually take this fold it over onto that seam where you can see whether or not these are on top of each other correctly. I'm gonna nudge that up a little bit, make sure it's flush there and then press down. There we go. And piece one connected to piece two perfectly. Now we can take and apply glue to the tab with the number two on it. And spread that out to the very edge like so, and we're gonna connect this to piece number three. We're alternating, long, short, and then long. Same thing, line that up, make sure it's flush at the bottom, flush up at the top where the horizontal score mark is. Press that down for a second, and then take it and fold it over onto itself, and check the alignment. Uh oh I got a bunch of glue on there somehow. Oh. I had a bunch on this piece of paper over there. No big deal. Okay, press that into place. There we go. Okay. One, two, and three all connected. Now we're going to take and apply glue onto tab three. Spread that out to the very edge. Looking good. Put that down flat. I need to move this out of the way before I get glue everywhere. And lining it up. Try to be as accurate as you can. Just rub that glue off if you had a little bit that escaped. Fold this over onto itself. Check your alignment there. There we go. Press that down. All right, now we have tab four is gonna connect back to section one. So let's get our glue going on tab number four. And spread that out nice and thin all the way out to the edge. That's gonna make sure that everything looks nice and seamless, almost like it was 3D printed. Okay, just, so this is, this is tab four. I'm literally taking the other end and just putting it down while it's still flat. Get that lined up. If you need to give it a little nudge upward, that's fine. 
I'll take it and fold it over onto itself, onto this seam. Give that a good press. There we go. Okay. And there is the box itself. It's starting to come together. Now this piece is symmetrical, so it doesn't matter if you do it this way or this way. What we're gonna do is we're gonna connect this to one of the tabs, uh, preferably one of the longer ones. Okay, so let's get our glue going on this long tab here. It doesn't matter which side you do. On a little bit heavier here. So we're gonna take that and spread that out to the very edge, like so. Okay, clean off your finger and grab this piece and let's connect that. Line that up right as flush as you can up against that edge, get it centered. Okay, there we go. Make sure it's making good contact throughout. And then you can actually take it and just drop it down, press down on the inside, get the rest of that tab to make contact. You can kind of flatten it out here too. Make sure you get it all the way out to the edge. There we go. Let's take a peek real quick and see our seam looks good. We can always clean that up too. If you have any gaps, I'll show you a little trick for that too. It involves our scrap piece of paper. And now this is where, this is probably the most glue we're gonna use. We're gonna apply glue to all three of these tabs. Going a little bit heavier here because I do need to spread it out. And I also need enough time to get all the way around the box without it drying. And just take that, spread it out all the way to the corners, very edge, like so. Okay, perfect. And now we'll go ahead and close this up and just focus on aligning it with this side here first. Get it nice and centered right out to the edge. If you need to kind of nudge it in a little bit and then nudge the sides in if necessary. And then just run your finger along the perimeter and continue to do that for a moment. Okay, now there's a lot of surface area that we just covered and I actually had to stop and hit record again so I had to walk away from this. And I do have a few little gaps. And again, it's not a problem. Grab a scrap piece of paper, a tiny one, I usually cut up a bunch of these after I cut out some projects just to have them on hand. Throw a little bit of glue right at the very corner of the scraps and tuck them in between these little areas where you have gaps. Paint the little paint a little bit of glue to the underside of this section and just press it down. And that seam will just disappear, or the gap I should say. It'll look nice and seamless. I've got another decent gap there that I'm going to clean up. And you know what? This is expected. Um, you'd have to be superhuman to get this all to sit properly on your first attempt. A lot of surface area, a lot of little details that you have to cover, or a lot of area you need to cover, I should say. And it's not going to happen every single time, but you can always go in and clean it up. And I think you should. Okay, I'm just kind of holding it in place, letting that glue get nice and tacky so it sets, makes everything look nice and seamless. And if you notice any other little gaps on any of the other sides, definitely feel free to clean them up. Okay, but I think that looks pretty darn good. All right, so that is our, that's the lid. You know what, let's, um, let's put this off to the side for just a moment. And let's construct the little, uh, well, the bottom of the box, so to speak. All right, so what we're going to do first is I'm going to take these two pieces. Oops, I'm already applying glue and I didn't even know it. I'm going to take these two pieces and glue them to the sides here so that we have four sides to our box. So apply some glue to this long tab here. We'll go a little bit thinner since the tab's not as thick. There we go. And you can take this piece 
and just get it glued right there. Butt it up to the score lines there. Make sure they are lined up with this horizontal score mark as well. There we go. Fold that over. And these two should come up without um, pushing on that at all. That means you got it nice and centered. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Go ahead and apply your glue to this tab. Spread that glue out. And you can put that down flat. Grab this piece, align it up just like we did on the other side. And press that into place. There we go. Fold that over, give it a little nudge if you need to. Mine was slightly off. Press that down. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna shape the box by applying glue to this tab. Sometimes I move things around like you just saw me do because I'm trying to get it at a good angle where you can see it. It's not necessarily how I would love to hold things, but I'm trying to make it so that you can see everything I'm doing. Okay, then we're gonna tuck this tab right behind this side, line it up as accurately as you can, and just press and hold. You can actually even put that down on your surface and use your table to get some extra leverage there. Some extra pressure. Okay, great. Then you can go over to this side. It doesn't really matter which side you do. And then finally, other side, same thing. We've got two more tabs to go here. We'll do this one. Spread that glue out. It's kind of bouncy. Okay, and tuck that in behind this section. Line it up. If you get a little bit of glue that shoots out, just rub it off with your finger. Press that down. That looks great. And the last section here. And I, I, I mentioned this time and time again, that if you notice that I'm kind of zipping along here and you're like, well, I, my, my, my glue's not dry yet, just ease up on the glue a little bit and thin it out. Less is more. And if that still doesn't help, then maybe try, try a different glue because not all glues are uh, created equal, although for the most part they are, but just go with uh, the Scotch Quick Dry if all else fails. Okay, so this is actually gonna hold, let's go ahead and grab one of these tissue boxes. Okay, and let's open this up. Okay, that's gonna hold the tissue box. It's got a little bit of wiggle room because not all of these are made alike. And then this is gonna slide right on top of it, like so. Make sure I got that. Oh, there we go, that's why, there we go, okay. So, and you can see here that the tissues come out wonderfully. If you want, like if, you ha if yours kinda looks like this, and you want to just kind of cut around this, you can do that so that it's, you know, not visible in there. That's how that's going to look. And I'm just putting this in here just to kind of reinforce this a little bit, give it a little extra strength. But that looks wonderful. Okay, so next, um, well, let's go ahead and finish this off by putting the flowers on. We do have a little base that we're going to create for this, uh, which we'll go over here in just a second. Now, each side with the large flowers has this piece and then this piece, okay? And what we can do, take a, I take a larger dowel here, you can take and just kind of grab the tip of each of these leaves and just kind of curl it towards you a little bit, just to give it a little bit of dimension so it's not so flat. Be careful because this is kind of a delicate piece because of all the cutouts and all the details. You don't want to go ripping it apart. Okay, there we go. Just train that a little bit. Make it, make it stick out a bit, just like that. So you can see the difference here between the flat one and the one that we scored, or trained, I should say. 
just giving it a little bit of life. Just kind of peel it back or curl it back, I should say. Okay, just like that. Do the center a little bit and the sides. There we go. Okay, now the same thing is going to apply to these pieces here. You just take and just kind of curl the tips in a little bit like that. And this part is super easy. Um, may want to, for these, I think regular glue will be fine, but for the flowers, since they are kind of heavy, uh, I'd probably get a hot glue gun going just to make it uh, get on there and stick on there faster without slipping. It's gonna be a lot of weight from the flower and we don't want the glue to fail us, okay? All right, so uh, these leaf, the leaf elements here are gonna go on the, the longer sides here. So this one, you'll notice there's a series of little markers within this little leaf and the, they're like little U-shapes. They're gonna go right inside here where the, you see the little U-shapes at the, the base of the veins for each of these. And for this, you really only need to apply glue where this little circle is at the bottom. Okay, so just right in this area here. And let's get that lined up. There we go, just like that. That looks good, press that into place. Okay, next, we'll take one of these and you can see that they sort of angle. You can either angle up or down. You want them angling down. Okay, and that's gonna go, you see this little circle here? That's gonna go right on top of that circle. And you just wanna make sure that you keep it nice and centered so that the leaves are straight out. Okay, so take a look at the leaves, give them a little, rotate them a tiny bit if you need to, to get them nice and straight. Just like that, okay? So on this side here, remember we have two large and two small. The large ones go on the large side. Okay, so this is where the hot glue is gonna come in handy. I'll just hit this with a, a little bit of hot glue. And I already put my pearl on there. Just make sure you get that nice and centered. There we go. Okay. And that is gonna stay on for us permanently now with the hot glue. And we'll repeat the same process on the other side here with this first leaf element, a little bit of glue just on the circle. Use the little guides to help you with the placement. Now obviously you still wanna kinda of give it a visual appraisal, make sure that it is in fact centered. Okay, there we go, we'll press that into place. That looks great. And with this piece here, again, we want the leaves angling down and we're gonna match that up with the existing circle there Get that nice and centered. Check the rotation of the leaves. And there we go, give that a squeeze. Perfect. All right, let's go hot glue time. Right in the center, beautiful. Swirl it around, get rid of those wispies. Grab your other large flower and let's get that centered on put in there. There we go. Beautiful. All right, and then finally, on the sides here, we're just gonna hot glue the flowers right to the center. Just throw a little bit of hot glue there. And pop that one in place, nice and centered, like so. And then finally, last one, right there. Get our flower, get that centered. And that's that, that's beautiful, okay? So we'll pop that back on top of here. Now you could make it just like this, as is, but we also have created a nice little base for this thing. That's beautiful, that's a beautiful little box. Okay, I might just trim that. All right, so let's take a look at the base. Very simple, almost done here. Okay, so this is pretty much, for the most part, already put together with the exception of the bottom. And just like we did with the lid, 
I'm going to take and glue this to one of the long tabs like this. So I'm done with the hot glue. I can put that away and get it charged up for next time. We'll start by applying glue to this long skinny tab and spread that glue out to the very, very edge. Just like that. Okay, then take this piece and pop it right on there, right out to the edge of the tab and make sure it's centered as well. Okay, I'm gonna actually put this down flat like this and line it up like this. That works. Actually, probably a lot easier. Once you get it in place, you can kind of finagle it around and fold it however you need to to get the best result. Okay, this is gonna be the bottom, so no one's even gonna see it, but we do wanna keep these seams nice and neat. Okay, there we go. Wonderful. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna connect these sides together here. And we have this little tab here. Throw a little bit of glue on there. I'm gonna thin that out. Now we're gonna have to be patient and let this sit for a few minutes. Okay, so just tuck that in there. And what I probably should have done, I'm gonna fold that back. And just line that up right there. And just hold that in place, like so. Okay, you gotta be really patient with this piece right here because it's holding up a lot of weight. Okay, I've, you can see a little gap there on that tab. You can clean that up if you want. I don't think it's the end of the world because it's gonna be hidden. It's gonna be on the inside. And uh, enough of that surface area is holding it. So I'm not overly concerned about that. Okay, we're gonna go head over to this side here on this tab. Try not to pull that back too much. And what I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna rest that like that. And I'm just gonna use a little scrap piece of glue to paint that on the tab here. Got it covered pretty well. And we'll take that tiny, tiny tab there and just line it up against this surface here. Okay, just press and hold that. Be patient. Again, this is holding up a lot of weight. One little tab doing a lot of work. So be patient. There we go. Okay, good. All right, great. So now, we're gonna head over to the other side here. We've got two more of these little tabs that we need to glue to the other walls here. You can see my glue clogging up my nozzle. Okay, just pop that right up against this side and hold that in place. Give it a good squeeze. Um, also, while we're talking about it here, um, these little holes here on top, you can leave them as is, but they're also perfect little, uh, perfect little places to put some gold pearls or rhinestones or whatever you wanna put there just to kind of give it a little dimension and add a little bling to it, okay? Now, so that I don't have to pull this back, um, to be safe, I'll just throw a little glue on a scrap piece of paper and I will paint this tab with my scrap, there we go. And tuck that behind, line it up, and press and hold. There we go. And that should go pretty quick, okay. Now we're gonna take these tabs and fold them down, like that, and you know, apply glue to all three of these tabs. We're gonna close this up now. Feel free to go a little bit heavier here. We've got a lot of surface area to cover, and we don't want this to dry out before we get back. Okay, spread that out to the very edge, very corners. 
There we go. Right there. Beautiful. And we'll close it up, focus on getting it aligned here on this side. Might need to give it a little push, get it nice and centered. Okay, a couple more steps here. So these, uh, these little pieces, we're actually going to apply to the sides of this green base. Okay, this long one is gonna go on one of the long sides. We have two of these, so one on each side. And then we have some, some smaller ones that are not as wide. They're gonna go on the shorter sides. Okay, so what I'd recommend doing is obviously you wanna fold at the score marks here and apply your glue down the entire length of this piece. It's a little flimsy, so it might help to leave it on your table. Okay, and then literally, you can actually just leave it on your table like this and just press it up against the side. Make sure it's flush, top and bottom, and that the score marks match up with the very ends. Just press that down. Make sure it's nice and centered and flush. Continue to press that down. We don't want any gaps there. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And that looks great, no gaps. Grab this one here, fold at the two ends and apply our glue down the entire length and leave that on my surface. And then we'll, we'll glue the tabs down in just a moment. But same thing applies here. You can literally just kind of use your table to guide you, get it centered, and start pressing that into place. Okay, continue pressing down throughout. Get it nice and aligned. There we go. Beautiful. All right, now finally, you can take and throw a little bit of glue on these tabs, fold them over to the other side. I've got one here. Just throw a little bit of glue right there. Fold that over. There we go. And two more. Got one here, fold that over. And one more here, fold that over it down and then as you probably guessed it we're gonna finish it off with this piece on both sides both ends and you know with this we can actually apply our glue right to the box all the way to the very end you can take that glue and spread it out to the very edge too might as well and just pop that right into place same thing, just kind of running my fingers top and bottom to keep it flush and then press down. Beautiful. Okay, so that's our top. And we'll do the same thing on the other end. A little bit of glue there, all the way out to the very ends where the tabs are. And those little tabs, they fold over um, just in case, you know, there's a you know, a margin of error. We mess up a little bit and it's not perfect. And it also makes up for various thicknesses of paper. It'll make it look continuous no matter what. So everything will look nice and flawless. Okay, so there's your base. Beautiful. Now all that's left, you'll notice that on the top of the base, there are some little markers and those markers are to help you with the positioning of this piece, which is gonna go right here, centered, Use those markers to your advantage. And all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do a thick line along the perimeter, because I'm gonna spread that out to the very edge and then just do a little bit here, get that glue out to the very edge. We may need to go in and using our little painting method, just apply a little extra glue around the edge to make sure everything's sitting nice and flush. I personally don't like when I join two large pieces together like this, I don't like having gaps in between them, it looks kind of uh, not put together. <laughs> and use those little markers, get it centered. 
There we go. And press down. You can use a little dowel to get right into those corners. And I'm just kind of rotate this around a handful of times until it's making good contact all the way around. Okay, let's take a look. And honestly, once you put the lid on it, I think it's going to cover that up mostly anyway. Let's take a look here. There we go. Beautiful. Yep, it pretty much covers it up. So there it is. Okay, let's pop this out. Make it look official. What was that? There we go. Awesome. Look at that. Turned out wonderful. Don't forget to uh, bling this out a little bit if you want. Um, you've got little corners here where you can add some bling. Don't forget about the little circles there in the center or on top uh, among the uh, little branches and veins. And don't forget to also add a pearl or a rhinestone in the middle of the flower. But that's going to do it. Can't wait to see your version of it. Um, so if you do make this or anything from our new bundle, um, head over to your Facebook and do a search for Dreaming Tree Official. And also don't forget to visit us on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell so that you get notifications anytime we release a new product, whether it be uh, paid or free. Uh, so if you're making this as a piece of home decor, it's very functional. Um, if you know someone that just fell ill, got sick, um, got the flu or you know COVID or whatnot, they're going to be going through plenty of tissues. So maybe this would be a nice little gift to give them. Um, brighten up their room, brighten up their day, and let them know that you're thinking about them. But either way, I'm always thinking about you guys and I look forward to crafting with you again. Hey, thanks for crafting along with me. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out some of our other videos. And also, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And don't forget to visit our site and check out our free SVG section where we have over 140 free SVG files complete with assembly videos. I look forward to crafting with you soon.